Hi, I'm going to go over GeoASM today, which is a special type of GeoLayout option, which executes code instead of drawing something. To really get the most of this, you should know a bit about color combiners and GeoLayouts and C code. First, let's talk about how to make a GeoLayout with a GeoASM. First, we need a model and some form of structure. Here, I have a cute little default cube and three of its children. The parent cube is gonna have the child cubes directly parented to it. And then I want to put a GeoASM as a parent to the cube. So this object is going to be the parent of all the models. And on the empty, you want to make sure you have GeoASM selected. Now to actually export this, you need to put another empty as the root. And that's because Fan64 doesn't allow you to export anything unless it is a root. So on the GeoASM, you can choose a function and an argument. I have just a test function and a test argument here for demonstration purposes. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the primitive color via code. I have a material set up that uses primitive color alpha here as the primitive color goes from one to zero. It's going to fade from white to black. Now, in order to use this code, I need to make sure the primitive color box is unchecked so I can set it via code and it's not going to be set in the model. So now we get a look at what it looks like in game. And as I get closer to them, it gets more and more black. So I've changed the primitive color alpha to be a function of how close Mario is to the object. And what's great about this is that it is unique for each object. So this is going to allow me to edit objects independently instead of writing a, let's say a scrolling texture, which will affect everything at the same time. So this is the function I wrote. It's going to follow some boilerplate code and that's just the nature of GeoASM. So what we have here is a set of args that are going to remain the same always and a type of graphics. That's because we're going to return a display list. What we do here is we have the call context and we're going to change the action based on what that is. So there's a create context and that is called when the GeoASM is made. And then we have the render. This is going to be called when the display list is on screen. If it's an object, right, then it's not going to be on screen at certain points depending on where the camera is. And so this won't be called. If it's part of a level, then this is always going to be called as long as the level is being drawn. So it means you're in that area. So what we can do is we can get the object via a global variable. Then we're going to alloc a display list. I'm going to use two display list commands. So I use a size of two. Then I get the distance to Mario and I divide it by my parameter. And that's going to be the alpha I use. I set the primitive color to that, and then you're gonna end the display list. It's very important that you do this. Finally, this is also something that people forget a lot. You have to put the display list on a layer. I'm gonna put it on layer one because my object is on layer one. So how you're gonna set the layer is you're gonna set the node flags for your graph node to the layer number. You wanna use this path to get to the flags, and then you're gonna to wanna to set it to the layer and you want to shift it by eight. So if you notice the GeoASM is applied to the parent cube and the three child cubes. What if we wanted to just apply it to the child cubes? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to take this GeoASM and then you're going to parent it only to the children. So now we can see the parent has nothing in front of it, but the GeoASM is going to affect the children. Another thing we should do to be safe is set the material of the parent to something that sets the primitive color. When you call multiple objects in a row, the children are going to have the primitive color set by a code, and the parent is going to just inherit whatever is set uh, down the line. So if you draw the first parent, it's not gonna have anything. Then you're gonna draw the children, and they're gonna set the prim color, and then when you draw the next parent, it's going to inherit the same prim color as the children. So you want to make sure if you're not inher inheriting the prim color from the GeoASM that you set it. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you click one of, uh, this button. It's going to make it a single user. So it's going to have a unique material. And then you're going to hit primitive color. And that's going to look like this. You can see the child cubes are dark and the parent cube is white. So with that intro out of the way, I'm going to go over a few more examples of what you can do with GeoASM. And it's mostly going to be code focused. 
So just uh, bear with me and try to read the code and pause the video if you really need to. I want to go over them quite, kind of quickly. So this is the next type I want to go over, which is a GeoASM that edits the object. Now, the reason you would want to do this is because a GeoASM only occurs when the object is on screen. If you look at these three objects, they're rotating, but they're at different points in their rotation. And that's because if I take one off screen, it's gonna stay at the same spot it was when it was on screen. So this is really good for certain types of moving objects or enemies that you wanna make sure only do stuff when they're on screen and visible. Okay, so this GASM is gonna be really simple. We're gonna get the current object and we're gonna set a variable. Talon goes just gonna rotate while it's on screen and then we're going to actually rotate it. We're gonna rotate it by the parameter in the GUASM variable. So you get that by getting the current graph node. You need to cast it to the current type, and then you're gonna get the parameter. I'm gonna add that to the face angle, y'all. Okay, so the last one I wanna go over is creating a transform and adding other models. So here I have a star model that I added, and I actually scaled and moved the children. So you can see they moved up and they got scaled down. Now you wanna keep in mind that when you do this, rather than just making an object transformation, like saying changing the object position, it's not going to change the collision. And if I can find where this original collision is, um, I'll show you right there, right? You can see the blocks are still there. So you don't really wanna do this with anything solid. You also don't really wanna do this with anything you can interact with. So the star is not really gonna be good. It's really just for visuals. So, you know, if I wanted to say, put the star on the face of my cube, or if you wanted to reuse this playlist, but you wanted to use a different one each time. For example, if I wanted to use a red flame, or if I wanted to use a blue flame on different objects, maybe you could set it via the parameter, where you could set it based on the state. It's also good for just dynamic transformations. For example, if I wanted to rotate the star, and I didn't want to rotate the object. And you, you can do that with an animation, but you can also do it with a GeoASM. And that can be convenient for a few reasons. Now let's go over the code. What we're gonna do is the same thing as always. We're gonna get the objects and we're gonna add like a display list. Now we're gonna work with matrices. And matrices are required to do a transformation, but uh, don't worry, I'm gonna make it simple. So there's just a few important things to know. First is you want to alloc a matrix to put in the final transformation. And secondly, you're probably gonna want a secondary matrix, a temporary one to apply changes to. So you're gonna wanna declare a matrix and you're gonna wanna alloc a matrix, just like this. So now we're gonna translate. You have to use this function and that's because Hacker64 combined all the different translations and rotation matrices to be one function. So when you use it, you're gonna use it just like this. You're gonna put the source matrix all the way on the right, uh, right the destination right next to it, and then you're gonna wanna put the rotation here and the translation here. If you're ever wondering how do I do a specific type of translation or a transformation, then the best thing to do is just go to rendering graph node and look at a function to find out how the game does it. For example, if I wanted to learn how to scale something, I could just go to geoprocess scale and then see how the game does it. And then I can just copy this code. And that's generally the best way to learn. So after we translate, we're gonna scale. And we can use the same matrix here twice. You can't do that for this translate rotate function. And that's because the way it's coded, it expects two different uh, matrices. This one is coded to be just fine with the same matrix. Finally, and this is very important, we're going to copy the matrix with our transform to a new matrix. This is because the matrix with our transform is in floats and we want to have a fixed point S16 matrix. That's because that's what the N64 uses. Finally, if we want to have this transform passed down onto the children, we're gonna put it on the matrix variable. This is the variable that's passed to the function and this is actually the current transform of the object. If we alter this transform, then the current transform is gonna be different. Now to actually apply the transform, we're going to use GSP matrix, and you're just gonna, you can really just copy this, 
push or no push uh, really that comes down to whether or not you want to have multiple display lists so if I only wanted to affect one display list and then have the other one not translated I could take this uh, push the matrix pop the matrix it's going to remove it from the stack and then I can apply it like this and now I would have two different stars finally we're going to end the display list and then we're going to put it on the layer and just for reference, if I were to actually do that transform, it would look like this. You can see the original star is up here with the transform, and the one that I removed the push from is down here. Anyway, that's all I got. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I can make some more tutorials on GeoASM and give more in depth on other things you can do because there's really a lot. So I just wanted to do a little primer and go over some basic stuff. Check out my other tutorials in the description. It's going to be a playlist, and I have a bunch of text tutorials on my website. Peace.